Today's daily insight is about the PE application, specifically how to select your professional references. So as you know, most of this channel is about the technical aspects of preparing for the PE exam. I try to give you insights about the different topics and key points that you need to understand. And then in my courses, we do loads of practice problems to make sure that you've left no stone unturned and you can pass the test. But that's really only half the battle because we also have the application process. And that's why I wanted to make a couple of videos about that. And then from an even broader standpoint, I'm gonna talk about some lifestyle factors that might affect how you prepare for any big challenge, but especially for an exam such as the PE. So that will follow in a series of videos uh, after these two on the application process. So the application has three parts. It has your personal details, and then it has describing your experience, and then your professional references. So the process varies a little bit from one state to the next. In some states, you take the test first, and then only once you have that passing score do you do your application. Um, I didn't know about that. That's uh, true for California, Oregon. I've worked with some of you in different areas. Uh, the way it works in New York, the way I did it, you do the application first, and only once your application is approved, then you can go and register for the exam. So slight differences there. But regardless, you still have the same structure to the application. And we're going to talk about how you describe your experience in a separate video, but here I just want to talk about the selection of your professional references. So ideally, you want your references to meet all of the following criteria. The first one's kind of obvious, active PEs are strongly preferred. So you want each of your references to be an active PE um, that's registered, they have a, an active status, they do all their continuing education, uh, every two or three years, so they uh, are in good standing. Now, this isn't a strict requirement. All other things being equal, then you want to find PEs, but there may be exceptions. In my case, I had two out of three references that were PEs, with the third one being my direct manager, who was a highly experienced engineer uh, who had been managing PEs for more than a decade before my career even started. So there wasn't much of a reason for him to pursue a PE license, and yet he was still a great choice for me um, because I was able to meet all of the other criteria, which we'll go through here. The next one is, this is a person that knows your experience. They should know your skills, right? They shouldn't be you know, reaching or guessing or... Um, spending too much time talking to aspects of your character, right? Which are good to know, and it's good to throw a few of those things in. But you really want someone who can say, okay, this is what Dan works on every day. He spends 60 or 70% of his time working on such and such technical aspects of these projects, right? So if it's not going to be a direct manager, then it could potentially be a senior colleague, somebody that you work closely with every day. You know, this is not a random favor that you're going to ask somebody who you work tangentially with a couple of times a month to do. Really, the more interaction, the better. Ideally, somebody that you collaborate with on a daily or a daily basis or at least a few times a week and you have some mutual influence over one another. So there's a bit of a relationship there. Next, you want someone with strong written communication. All right? This is somebody who's going to put the time and energy in to work on this application for you and you really want them to do a stellar write-up. So if you're not confident that they're strong in that area, then one thing that I would suggest is work with them to create a draft for them or at least draft up some bullet points that they know what you would uh, want and hope for them to talk about. That way you're not creating extra work for them, right? Because this is a person who's putting their credibility on the line to vouch for you. So the last thing you wanna do is make more work for them. And lastly, this is someone who wants the best for you. It sounds obvious, but you want people who are truly in your court. If your experience is strong, this may be a non-factor, right? You're gonna apply and you're gonna be successful and nothing's gonna get in your way. But if it's a borderline case, then the words that this person writes could make that difference. So that's today's daily insight on professional references for the PE application.